we're asked to evaluate the given definite integral. Notice right now the integrand function is a product of two binomials. There is no product rule for integration, and therefore we begin by determining the product of the two binomials. And let's go ahead and show the work below. We have the quantity x plus 7 times the quantity x minus 3. For a quick review, to multiply we distribute the x from the first binomial, and then we distribute the 7 from the first binomial. Notice how we have four products. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x, giving us minus 3x. Distributing the 7, we have 7 times x, which gives us plus 7x. And then finally we have 7 times negative 3, which is negative 21, giving us minus 21. Simplifying, we have x squared plus 4x minus 21, which means the given definite integral is equal to the definite integral from 1 to 5 of x squared plus 4x minus 21 dx. The next step is to find the antiderivative with respect to x. The antiderivative of x squared is equal to x cubed divided by 3 plus the antiderivative of 4x, which is 4 times x squared divided by 2 minus the antiderivative of 21 with respect to x, which is 21x. Let's go ahead and simplify the antiderivative. Let's write x cubed divided by 3 as 1 third x cubed. And then we have plus 2x squared, simplifying, minus 21x. And now we need to determine big F of 5 minus big F of 1, where big F of 5 is 1 third times the cube of 5, plus 2 times the square of 5, minus 21 times 5. And then we have minus big F of 1, where big F of 1 is 1 third times the cube of 1, plus 2 times the square of 1, minus 21 times 1. Simplifying big F of 5, or 1 third times the cube of 5, plus 2 times the square of 5, minus 21 times 5, is negative 40 thirds. And then we have minus big F of 1, which is 1 third times 1 cubed, plus 2 times 1 squared, minus 21 times 1, which is negative 56 thirds. And simplifying, we already have a common denominator of 3. The numerator simplifies to negative 40 plus 56, which is equal to 16 thirds. Before we go, let's look at the graph of the integrand function over the closed interval from 1 to 5. Remember, we can view a definite integral as the sum of the signed area bounded by the integrand function and the x-axis over the interval of integration. And we say signed area because if the area is below the x-axis, it's negative. If the area is above the x-axis, it's positive. So in blue, we have the graph of the integrand function. And notice how if we shade the area bounded by the function and the x-axis over the closed interval from 1 to 5, over the interval from 1 to 3, the area is below the x-axis, which would be negative, and over the interval from 3 to 5, the area is above the x-axis, and therefore this area would be positive. And because the value of the definite integral is positive 16 thirds, this tells us the area above the x-axis is more than the area below the x-axis. I hope you found this helpful.